You know, I some days I'm, I can't believe who I can get on my own show. I mean, it really is quite unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> um, in his first appearance, Representative Mondaire Jones tweeted, I am humbled by the trust voters in Westchester and Rockling that have placed in me. He could have been my congressman when I lived in co- in Westchester. Yep. Uh, grateful for the opportunity to serve the community that raised me, the community that just uh, sent an openly gay black guy who blew up in sec- who grew up in Section 8 housing and on food stamps to Congress. He's 33 years old, uh, uh, right, uh, by, raised by a single mo- mother who worked multiple jobs to provide for their family. He later graduated from Stanford, worked at the Department of Justice during the Obama administration, and graduated from Harvard Law School. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, <laughs> on my show, Representative Mondaire <laughs> Jones, good morning. Uh, it's so nice to meet you. Good morning. That has been the best introduction of me today. Thank you. <laughs> you are an impressive. <laughs> I was doing my show prep last night. I'm like, he's an impressive dude. What? How do I prepare for yeah. this? <laughs> just, just be yourself. I promise. Well, you know, Representative, yeah. I'm so happy to. T- and you could have. I lived in Croton on the Hudson, so you could have been my guy. I, I mean, I have Adam Schiff now, so I'm okay. But um, Adam's a good guy. He's a he's a real leader. And uh, but yeah, would have loved to have you in, in Croton. You know, and we call it. Some people call it People's Republic of Croton. We got some real progressives in Croton. <laughs> we do. It was. I, love it. I lived right around T Town, the nature preserve. It was a little. We were a bunch of little hippies. We were. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> um. So, Representative, uh, I'm so happy to talk to you and just talk about your background, because we were talking about this Ron Johnson stunt that forcing these poor clerks to read the bill till two in the morning to delay. And, you know, to people that grew up like you and a lot, the vast majority of Americans, this is not funny. You know, it is not funny. Over 520,000 of us are dead. People have lost their jobs. They're standing in food lines. And this is all Republicans have are stunts at this point. Right. It, it is so shameful that we didn't get Republicans in the House to, to vote for this bill, despite the fact that 77 percent of the American people, including the majority of Republicans, support the American Rescue Plan. And by the way, when I say we didn't get, it's not the lack of trying or engaging in good faith. I mean, the, Congress is broken. Our democracy, in fact, is broken. Uh, and it has everything to do with the fact that the Republican Party uh, has been able to uh, exert minoritarian rule in many instances, uh, over the American people, and that's why we have to uh, make sure we enact HR one and get it to Biden's desk. I thank you. You you know you were all over Twitter about HR one, and it, it just it's I, I keep saying, Representative, really nothing else matters. I don't think if we don't get this passed, right? And you you said it best. You said Congress must begin to end the new Jim Crow by passing the For the People Act and the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. Um, and it just I I mean. By the way, um, you said if there was any doubt that the Congress must pass for the People Act to save our broken democracy, consider that despite 76 percent of Americans supporting the American Rescue Plan, not a single Republican in Congress voted for it tonight. I mean, that just makes your case right there, doesn't it? It, it, it really does. Uh, and of course, you know, when we passed the Equality Act, which would enshrine uh, protections for the LGBTQ community and federal anti-discrimination law so that you can't be fired. Uh, for being gay or, uh, or or discriminated against in the housing context, something that even the majority of Republicans uh, are, are supportive of this bill, you know, it, we, we still we still couldn't get the kind of support that you would expect based on public opinion from my Republican colleagues in the House. And of course, they're not going to do anything in the Senate, which is why we need to, by the way, repeal the filibuster. And, you know, as they just police requested yesterday, as you know, a 60 day extension of the uh, National Guard there at the U.S. Capitol to protect all of you. And you said, uh, you know, the House is about to vote on the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act a day early, meaning you had to leave right before this ridiculous March 4th date because white supremacists are again threatening the Capitol. I mean, if you can't see the irony in that. Right. And, and I would add on top of, you know, filibuster and, and all it's all it's all racist. The Electoral College, the filibuster. I mean, it, you're absolutely right. We we've got to move on to the times that we're in, don't we? We absolutely do. Uh, you know, the the Jim Crow relic <laughs> that is the filibuster was used to block civil rights legislation a generation ago. 
And, and now people would have it block the Equality Act, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, uh, the For the People Act, and once we pass it later this year, the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, uh, which we urgently need as the Republican Party seeks to uh, disenfranchise large swaths of the American electorate because it cannot compete on the merits of its policy ideas. Just look at the polling on all any number of things we just passed this week in the House of Representatives and over the past week. Uh, so we have to make sure that we are moving into the 21st century uh, to the extent people are concerned about, uh, you know, minority rights uh, in connection with preserving the filibuster. My goodness, we, we are trying to literally give minorities rights in this country, uh, but the filibuster is blocking it. So we, we, we have to be, I think, uh, clear eyed about the fact that we are in an age where there is polarization, unlike anything we have seen because of the uh, right wing pro propaganda machine like Fox News and mm -hmm. OAN, yeah. uh, where we can't even agree on a common set of facts anymore. Uh, and where, you know, two thirds of my Republican colleagues in the House voted to overturn the free and fair election that resulted in the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I mean, these are just very different times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and ironic, isn't it, that they're saying the uh, George Floyd Act would uh, defund police, which, of course, you know it does not. But at the same time, not one of them voted for COVID relief, which actually does defund police, <laughs> state and local governments, right? I mean, the irony. It, 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 you know, the, the, the American Rescue Plan literally pro would provide $350 billion to states and local municipalities uh, who who that that are urgently in need of this? I mean, in New York State alone, we're facing a fifteen billion dollar budget shortfall, uh, and and that's to say nothing of the school districts that would benefit from this, and not just in safely reopening, but in being able to pay teachers their contractually negotiated salaries uh, and, and and things of that nature. I mean, it's just it's so. And and then of course the fifteen dollar minimum wage, which passed in states like Florida, which has Republican senators. Yeah, it is really extraordinary yeah. the kind of progress that is being held up by these outdated norms that people, for now at least, are uncomfortable reforming. I remain optimistic that we will see filibuster reform or repeal because I have to believe that Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema got elected to the Senate to actually legislate and not do nothing. Well, yeah. I mean, and you said it out loud on Twitter. Passing H.R. 1 would put the GOP out of business nationally. Even Trump knows that. Well, no. here's an here's an idea. Come up with better ideas. I mean, expanding right. people's right to vote should not scare you unless you know that your ideas are not popular and ours are. I mean, they see these same polling we do, don't they? That what 77 percent of the American people are for the the uh, the covid relief bill that not one Republican voted for. I mean, how out of step can you be with the American people? Right. And then what makes it worse is to just be. A Congress full of millionaires saying that people don't deserve a fifteen dollar minimum wage. Yeah. I live in West, I live in Westchester. I represent Westchester and Rockland counties, and you know it is extremely expensive to live here. And so, yeah. you know, even the proposal to uh, to shave off some of the eligibility for for the fourteen hundred dollar survival check yeah. that we're going to be sending out uh, is a slap in the face to families here that I represent. You know, eighty thousand dollars in Westchester isn't much. Yeah, especially when you have a family to support. Well, that's what I was saying. It's not just areas like New York, L.A., whatever. If you have a family anywhere, you know, it's seven twenty five is anyway, it's ridiculous. But you you know, you said it best on Twitter. You said the Senate needs more people for whom policy is personal. And thank you. I mean, it's personal for you. I have to say them becoming a white supremacist party, a black gay guy in the Democratic Party that grew up in Section 8 housing on food stamps and went to Stanford and Harvard and uh, the Obama Justice Department, you must drive them insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the same hallway as Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I immediately put up the Black Lives Matter flag. Uh, and then we, we, wow. we got a pride flag as well. Uh, down the hall, my yeah. colleague and, and good friend Marie Newman has the, has, has the, the trans flag up. It, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, my God. Yeah, you retweeted someone that said Marjorie Taylor Greene arguing against Democrats election reform bill says the real voter suppression is members of Congress having to wait in lines and go through metal detectors to vote. And you said if only she and others would stop trying to kill the rest of us. <laughs> right. I mean, it's literally I mean, I mean, they have to know that the reason we have these metal detectors is because people like Lauren Boebert and their and their colleagues are, are, have repeatedly tried to sneak firearms onto the House floor.
Right. And it's just it's just not in good faith, anything that these people say. And so and I think the American people increasingly understand that they see what's going on. Yeah. I mean, you have these, these my colleagues in the Senate and in the House. We, we all nearly died together on January 6th. We know who is responsible for it. And then you're going to quit him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I, I mean, and by the way, a good tweet from John. So just to review, the GOP has threatened to not cooperate with Democrats if they end the filibuster. Meanwhile, the GOP refuses to cooperate in any way with Democrats now. I mean, mm-hmm. I really do hope we figure something out on the on the filibuster because it's we are giving Mitch McConnell veto power again, aren't we? And we don't need to. And you know they would repeal the filibuster if, of course. The, if, if the roles were reversed. And, and so, I mean, it's just time that we deliver for the mm-hmm. constituencies uh, that urgently need relief in this country and that got Democrats elected, uh, in, including the president of the United States and the vice president of the United States. I mean, come on with this. Again, this is something that is overwhelmingly supported. Talk about bipartisan yeah. by the American people. That should be the measure of bipartisanship because, unfortunately— Our electoral systems are set up in such a way that the vote is being suppressed, especially black and brown people in southern states. uh, And the people Mm -hmm. who represent them are not representative of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope um, even the mansions and cinemas of the Senate can see that if we don't pass this, I I mean, none of their other priorities are going to get done. We're not going to get anything passed. And it's. I, I just, you know, it, like you say, you actually said it best. What do you think Mitch McConnell, we all know what Mitch McConnell would do, right? The filibuster yeah. would already have been blown up. I mean, it, I think we have the majorities. We just have to start acting like it. People worked really hard to get us the White House, the Senate, and, and the House, right? And, and I remain optimistic. I mean, I, I look at someone like Kristen Sinema, who I admire. She's an LGBTQ history maker in her own right. I know she wants to pass the Equality Act. I have to believe yeah. that she is going to work to pass the Equality Act in the Senate. I am a gay woman. I've made that my personal project. Arizona is not that far from California. This is why I must stay here and not in Croton on the Hudson, because I, I, <laughs> I have a job to do, Representative. Oh, God boy. <laughs> but don't tell Adam Schiff I am. You are, yeah. ma- you are making me Croton. You're making me Croton curious again, because you're so fantastic. <laughs> come, on, come on in. The water's warm. <laughs> <laughs> jump jump yeah. in right near Croton Dam. Um, okay, <laughs> Representative, yeah. what, a, what a pleasure to meet you. I was really, honestly, so excited, and I hope you'll come back often. I will, I promise. Okay. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you too. Awesome. All right, thank you, sir. There he goes, Representative Mondaire Jones. Come on! Yeah, yeah, he was cool. Bam. Bam. Driving him crazy. I think that's like owning the, owning the, right, owning could, the right wing. <laughs> yeah, you could also be his mom. Oh, shut up. He's 33. He's a baby. You could totally be his mom. I totally couldn't be his mom. I'm 35, according to (laughs) Carol Burnett on Twitter and Dr. Nicole. Okay, 40. Mm -hmm. By the way, Dr. Nicole laughed when I said everyone says, can you can you make her look old enough to get the vaccine now and then put it all back? (laughs) It's going to be when death becomes her with with, with spray paint cans and whatever. Just take it all away for so I can get a shot and then put it all back. Put it all back.